Early this morning, it was reported that Iran had shot down a US military surveillance drone. Now there were of course different stories depending on who you were getting the perspective from. The US military argued that the drone was shot down on international airspace. However, Iran has come out and said no, the surveillance drone actually entered our airspace and it was a sign of provocation and we shot it down as a result. Now given the way John Bolton and Mike Pompeo have been pushing for war and given the flimsy evidence they've provided in regard to the Japanese oil tanker that was targeted, some are are really questioning whether the US government is, is telling the truth here or if they're just pushing for a war or trying to rally support for the war. And one of the people who's actually downplaying this whole attack is Donald Trump. And huh. we're gonna get to his comments in just a second. But first, I wanna go to a statement by the top general in Iran. Here is what he had to say. We have no intention to fight with any countries. But we are completely ready for war. What happened today was an obvious sign of this accurate message. So that was General Hussein Salami, that is his name. And he is saying, look, we are, again, we're not looking for war, but this, this is an act of provocation and we're gonna protect ourselves. It is the same thing that we would do here in the United States if a drone, a surveillance drone from an adversary entered our airspace. So uh, here's my analysis of what happened. Uh, I think unfortunately the Iranians are telling the truth again and we are lying again. Uh, now there's a very, very notable exception here of Donald Trump. So we're gonna get to that in a second. He's not telling the truth either, but that, that's a good thing, I'll explain. Uh, but uh, the US says, oh, I was over international waters. The Iranians are like, we have video of the down drone in our waters. So. <laughs> now they could be making that up. Did I see the video and do I know where exactly Iranians international waters are? Did I confirm that within the last 24 hours? No, okay, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm telling you it's my analysis. Okay, but based on what has happened so far in the context of all of this, I would be very surprised if Mike Pompeo and John Bolton were telling the truth. They haven't told the truth in any of this so far. And could they have sent in the drone into Iranian territory on purpose to get it shot down? So they could then turn around to Donald Trump and go, hey, Mr. Trump, I, I know you don't wanna get involved in the uh, war in the Middle East, but they shot down our drone, what could we do? But it turns out that plan was foiled by Donald Trump. That is a twist nobody saw coming. Well, you partly didn't see it coming. We actually started alluding to it over the last couple of days here on the Young Turks that he might make that turn. And then some of the, the people who are, I don't wanna use the word heroes, I don't wanna Biden this, but uh, on the other hand, who really did something great here are Tucker Carlson and Matt Gates, two guys I am not prone to give compliments to. Uh, so but they are working to make sure we do not get into a war with Iran, and Trump does listen to that. that you're absolutely right. Uh, Trump also listens to his base, and invading another country is not popular with his base. So you have people on the right, uh, voters, and you have these talking heads on Fox who luckily in this case are pushing for the right thing, which is avoiding the war in Iran. And I just wanna quickly mention that over and over again, we see that the White House can't get its story straight when it comes to Iran. So they're trying to rally support for this war, but they keep making all of these ridiculous mistakes. This is a small mistake, but it just again shows you that they are not getting their story right. So for instance, um, Iran added that the downed drone was a US made RQ 4A Global Hawk spying drone. A US official previously identified to CNN the model of the drone was MQ 4C Trition. The US Central Command later said that it was what Iran said. Said it was. So Oops. that just stands out to me because you have the US government right now pushing toward a war in Iran and they still can't get their story straight. I mean, they're sloppy and messy beyond belief, which is why a lot of people are questioning the evidence that we're seeing from the Trump administration. But with that said, it does appear that Trump is, is going in the right direction for now. And I wanna show you this video where he really downplays this whole drone issue. Take a look. I would imagine it was a general or somebody that made a mistake in shooting that drone down. And fortunately, that drone was unarmed. It was not, there was no man in it. And there was no, it was just, it was over international waters, clearly over international waters. But we didn't have a man or woman in the drone. We had nobody in the drone. Are you still open? It would have made a big difference, let me tell you. It would have made a big, big difference. 
But uh, I have a feeling, I may be wrong, and I may be right, but I'm right a lot. I have a feeling that it was a mistake made by somebody that shouldn't have been doing what they did. I think they made a mistake. Okay, it, it, even when we want to agree with him, he makes it really hard. <laughs> I'm right a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I might be wrong or I might be right, but I'm right a lot. Okay, almost ever. And in this case, um, you're right on the substance of the policy, uh, but it, yeah, unfortunately, he's not telling the truth. But that's okay, I'll take it. So what, what, what's he not telling the truth about? He says, uh, Iran probably made a mistake. No, Iran, when they are wrongly accused, comes out and says, no, we didn't hit the tanker. That's crazy talk, we didn't do that at all. In this case, they're like, yeah, no, we hit the drone. We def it was us, we hit it, it was not a mistake. That's because it was in our territory, okay? And then Trump also, I don't think, told the truth when he said it was in international waters. So, but nonetheless, I don't care about any of that in this context, because Trump is trying to find a reason not to escalate the conflict. Wonderful, terrific, I'm happy to give him credit there. So what, why do we do even, so people say, as always, with any claims of bias, etc. Why don't we like Donald Trump? Because of what he does, mm -hmm. right? If he does things that are positive, like getting us out of a war with Iran, great, then I like that part. There's nothing wrong with that. And so here there's actually one more set of people that are on the right side of this, and of course another guy who's on the wrong side. The guy on the wrong side is Netanyahu, unsurprising the Dick Cheney of Israel. And he's dying for a war, and he's been trying to agitate for that war all along. And he says, Iran has intensified its aggression against the United States and the international community. Israel has assassinated scientists inside of Iran. But that doesn't count as aggression. You know, another word for assassination is murder. And one of the scientists they killed in front of his kid's preschool. Jeez. Okay, but that apparently is not aggression. But if Iran shoots down a drone in their territory, that apparently is aggression for Dick Cheney slash Netanyahu, okay? So that's Netanyahu, that's not surprising. Now, this is slightly surprising. The Pentagon is saying, mm, not a good idea. So when Trump is asking around, Bolton and Pompeo are like, come on, let's just go to war, we want war so bad. Can you, you know that they even looked at you kind of weird. I think that they, they might totally. have, yeah, yeah, you know, they worked at you the wrong way, They're right? like these terrible yeah. high school instigators, like looking for a conflict, except in this case, they're thinking about money. <laughs> they're thinking about the money that can be made through this conflict. That's right, defense yeah. contractors, oil companies, etc. So now, then Trump asked the Pentagon, the Pentagon is like, look, there's a couple of problems here. Number one, if you really wanna get rid of Iran's nuclear program, if they start building it back up, now, we had already gotten rid of it, <laughs> that was the Obama deal, but you tore that up, okay, so that's unfortunate. Anyway, but if you wanna get rid of it, if they start building it back up, it's like the only real way to do that is regime change. And they're like, and they have warned Trump, that is a massive undertaking, do not underestimate that. So if that reporting is true about what the Pentagon said, wonderful, that because that is accurate. Then they, and then apparently there was a, a request for guidance on what if we, did one strike, like oh, we'll show them such a neoconservative John Bolton thing. And that is what uh, Senator Lindsey Graham is pushing for, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. and so they're saying, oh, we'll teach them a lesson. We'll put some points on the board, as Lindsey Graham says, right? Uh, so the Pentagon was like, mm, no, think about it. If we do a strike, you're assuming that they won't strike back, but almost certainly they will, then we will have to counter strike. And then we have escalated the conflict in a way that draws us into that giant war. Uh, and then you do anything you like, man, our job is to give you military advice. But all these roads lead to an enormous war in the Middle East. So just recently there was a bipartisan uh, congressional leadership briefing at the White House. And uh, Chuck Schumer came out of that briefing and mentioned that uh, he wants to ensure that the Trump administration doesn't push for war or invade Iran unilaterally. There's still a lot of concern that they'll cite that uh, 2001 um, Afghanistan related uh, measure as a way of, or an excuse to bypass Congress and, and invade unilaterally. So there's that worry. But there's also, uh, you know, just going back to what uh, Trump said in that first video that we showed you. He really emphasized, you know, it's a drone, there wasn't anyone in it. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he wants to appear strong, like he cares about appearing strong. And I know that he probably has some worry about appearing weak if he doesn't act on what just happened. But I like the fact that he's emphasizing there wasn't a person in there, this was an accident. 
Like that's a good sign, right? Yes. It really shows that he's looking for any way to avoid actually engaging in a war. And then I thought that this next clip was also telling. Again, this is Trump, take a look. I don't know, I, I find it hard to believe it was intentional if you wanna know the truth. I think that it could have been somebody who was uh, loose and stupid that did it, but will be able to report back and you'll understand exactly what happened. But it was a very foolish move, that I can tell you. Do you, do you feel like there are members of your administration who are trying to push you into conflict? No, not at all, not at all. In fact, in many cases, it's the opposite. But I will say, look, I said, I wanna get out of these endless wars. I campaigned on that, I wanna get out. We've been in Afghanistan for 19 years. As you know, we've reduced very substantially in Afghanistan. Uh, we beat the caliphate, we took back 100% of the caliphate. When it was 99%, Justin, I said, we're gonna get out, we're gonna start peeling back, and everybody went crazy, because it was 99. So I said, all right, so we'll finish it up. So we got 100%, and we're pulling that back out of Syria. We're pulling a lot of people back. So he likes taking ownership for, for bringing American troops back, for, for no longer getting involved in these, in these interventionist wars. He likes to take credit for that, so that's good. One other thing, though, is remember, Trump doesn't want to appear weak. That applies to national security, but that certainly also applies to his own administration. So I'm sure reporters asking him about members of his administration pushing him in a certain direction doesn't sit well with him. So that's why I gave Tucker Carlson credit the other night because apparently they're having conversations with Tucker's telling him, be careful, Bolton and Pompeo are trying to trick you. Now, you notice I mentioned Matt Gates earlier. He's working with Ro Khanna, arguably the most progressive congressperson in the House and saying, no, you cannot do this war without getting authorization from Congress. And Matt Gates, arguably the most conservative member of the House. So this is an interesting ideological union between the right wing and the left wing against the establishment and the neoconservatives. Now that is bipartisanship that I love, as opposed to the bipartisanship in the so-called middle of Washington, where the right wing corporate uh, Republicans and the so-called left-wing corporate Democrats agree to rob us on behalf of their donors. That's what the media normally celebrates, that's what we can't stand. This is actual real bipartisanship, Ro Khanna uh, uh, is on the show, he, he talked about that. You can get that at tyt.com, all of our interviews are under the conversation, make sure you check that out. And so it is strange bedfellows and we do live in a topsy-turvy world where here the Young Turks is agreeing with Donald Trump against the rest of the Trump administration. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.